So in the last episode of Telegraph Tuesday, we left off in 1837 with Edward Davy showing off his new invention, the relay. This is an electrically operated switch. Pretty big deal in the field of telegraphy. And we also get the introduction of two new types of telegraph system. A guy called William Crook had seen Baron Schilling's machine. Do you remember him? The guy with the terrible portraits. And together with a guy called Charles Wheatstone made their own version, the Cook and Wheatstone needle telegraph. This thing. So you can see it's got a set of rotating needles and two needles can point towards any of the letters on there. So it's pretty easy for anybody to understand. Big advantage. The disadvantage, of course, is that you need a wire for every needle, uh, which is not so economical. Uh, so the goal now is to try and speed this up and make it cheaper so that you can send more messages and make more money. And luckily in that same year, a clever fella came up with an idea to send messages down one wire using a special code. This guy was called Samuel Morse. Samuel Morse was actually a pretty successful portrait painter before he turned his attention to telegraphy. Maybe Baron Schilling should have hired him, but he and his assistant, Alfred Vail, developed the simple system of dots and dashes that's still pretty useful today. Their original machine moved a stylus to mark a piece of paper to record the dots and dashes. But pretty quick, the operators actually figured out they could uh, decode it faster just by listening to the clicks and a buzzer. We've got a Morse key in the museum that you can come play with. These Morse keys are just simple electrical switches. You connect the circuit when you press it down. This one was used for practice by uh, members of the RAF. You can see here, it's got the uh, Morse code on it, so you can refer to it as you're learning. The code is arranged for efficiency, so the most common letters in the English language, E and T, are just a single dot and dash, respectively. Morse code, of course, needs a highly skilled operator. So Charles Wheatstone created another version of a telegraph called the ABC telegraph. Uh, this had two dials, one at either end. You press a button at one end to turn a handle and the dial at the other end turns to match the letter that you've selected. So pretty easy to use, pretty easy to decipher. There's no code. They were really robust and they were in use up until about 1930, actually. Uh, but the problem is they're quite slow, so we need another solution. Now we get to talk about what I think is my favorite era of telegraph machine, the printing telegraphs. So a clever guy called Royal Earl House invented the first one in 1846. And these had a keyboard transmitter, and at the other end, they printed the message on a piece of paper. That's why they're printing telegraphs. Uh, so there's no code. You could just read it plainly off of the paper. And they worked at about 40 uh, words per minute, which is not bad, is it? David Edward Hughes invented his own version of the printing telegraph in 1855, and you will have noticed with both of these uh, that they don't have a keyboard like we would imagine. They actually have keyboards with piano keys. And really, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you're trying to come up with an interface that people can interact with uh, quickly, then, I mean, have you ever listened to Rachmaninoff? Amazingly, at this point in history, 400 years on from Gutenberg's printing press, the typewriter and the QWERTY keyboard had not yet been invented. And some of the earliest typewriters had piano keys, and they were actually referred to as literary pianos. So we've now got machines that are easy to use, and the only limitation is how fast you can type. Our mate Charles Wheatstone came up with the next important innovation, punched tape. So this is a form of machine memory, okay, and it was inspired by uh, punched cards from Jacquard Looms. This one was used for making lace on a mechanical machine. Pretty amazing. Wheatstone's tape was a bit different, it had a row of holes in the middle that allowed a toothed wheel to pull the tape through the machine, and a dot was represented as two opposite holes, and a dash as two obliquely offset holes. So you could prepare messages beforehand, send them really fast, and then read them at your leisure. So next time we're going to be talking about these amazing machines, teleprinters, that combine the idea of the printing telegraph uh, with the development of paper tape. 
pretty amazing. So again, unfortunately, I've had to leave out a load of machines and people. There's just too much of a rich history with this stuff. Uh, most notably, a Frederick Bakewell's a, like electromechanical fax machine. It's incredible. It like scans the image. Go check it out. And any more things that I've missed, fill them in in the comments. Uh, and if you like this video and you like the series that we're doing, you want us to do more, then uh, you can support us on Patreon. The link is down below. Until next time. Oh God. I can see why people switch to the other types of telegraph. Oh, I can't do this.